Tell me what it is you love most about Christy. She's a loving person. And I can go clear up to right now. She is a very loving, caring mother that even still with her children basically away from home, take a lot of care and she's there for them. She's got that sweet, sweet temperament. George has always said his mother had that. She just never offended anybody. She was always a sweet, loving person. And Christy, so was my mother too, to that extent. She, she inherited that same thing, whether she saw it through me, but she surely saw it from her grandmothers too. What do you love most about Lynn? Lynn, Lynn is a, a person who can get out of line and you get after him and he teaches you something. I can remember coming home from somewhere one day. The kids were home alone. They were, they were big enough to be left alone and this sort of thing. And they'd had, a, they'd had a ruckus with each other. And Lynn had left. And he wasn't home when I got home. And I was very upset with him. But when he got home and told me all that had happened, I understood. And I still see Lynn being that way. You can get things going like this, and he can get it settled down, and everybody on the same page, and you learn. When it was time for him to go on his mission, he, he would have gone, but his friends were already out. He grew up with the boys, or he, his best friends were the boys Chrissy's age, a year older than him. So they were going on a mission, and he wasn't old enough to go. And then when he got old enough to go, he changed his mind. He, his eye just couldn't imagine myself out knocking on doors and talking about the church. Just couldn't do that. So he didn't go till he was, it was he was 20 and a half before he went. And I remember we pressured him a real lot to go. We, I, from the time he was two weeks old, I had this feeling, never had it with the other children. He, I want him to have a college education, but I, he really, needs to go on a mission. That had to come from the Lord. I couldn't have told that about a two-week-old baby, you know. So I've always known and always directed him in that direction, and then he doesn't want to do it. So one day, I've been putting, I was working part-time and putting money away to get him ready for his mission. And he was just, mm -mm -mm. So one day, George took the money and paid off our car with his mission money. <laughs> I could have bit his head off and spit it in his face. <laughs> Why did you do that? You didn't even tell me. It's not right. But he told Lynn what he had done. He looked at him like, you did? <laughs> you know. But it was only about six weeks after that when he came to his dad first and told him, I've decided I'm going on a mission. <laughs> but you aren't to tell the, the other kids. I, I knew. He called me and told me I was in the other room and told me that he was going. But I was not to tell the other kids. And so all the time, I said, why doesn't he go? What's wrong with him? You know, <laughs> I can't say a thing. But, and actually, we didn't know he was going, had even moved on that until the bishop's wife told us they were having a camp out thing, a ward camp out. A lot of wards do that. And the bishop's wife came in and said, Oh, Burton had such a lovely visit with him last night. <laughs> and getting his mission papers ready. Oh, well, that's really good. <laughs> but we didn't know. It. So then we told him, Well, now we know. So maybe you should tell your siblings. And, and they did. But at any rate. <laughs> but. The thing was that when he, when we took the pressure off of him and said, if he, George said, you know, if you decide you want to go on a mission, we'll try and help you. But it's up to you. And that's when he changed and decided to go. And that's the way it should be. They shouldn't be pressured. They have to have their say. It has to be their decision. By the time he left, he was 20 and a half. But he filled a very good mission. He actually had, I think, seven baptisms in Norway when many missionaries come home with no baptisms. It's very hard to 
convert people to baptism, you know, to get all the way to baptism even there. But, but he served a good mission. We all went and met him when he came home. It was wonderful. Anyway, that's, that's a good story for Lynn. <laughs> what do you love most about Cheryl? Cheryl is, well, you know, she is a very loving person. She is a great mother. In a lot of ways, she's had to be mother and father almost. Your dad traveled a lot. I don't know how she'd have managed living in Iowa where you, where Marty was born without being able to have privileges to fly home. I think she came home every month or six weeks and spent about a week. I guess he had to put up with that and being alone back there without his wife and darling little boy quite often. But, uh, but, he, but she did and, and she didn't like Iowa. She really does not have any love for Iowa. <laughs> you can't get her to say a good word about Iowa. But she had a darling little boy and she'd bring him home and we would just love him to death. Just like I do my little twins now because <laughs> they're close to me. Now you know Cam was here, born here, but I wasn't with him as much. But those twins just <laughs> steal my heart. <laughs> they steal my heart. But I don't love them more than I love all my Great grandkids. These are great grandkids I'm down to talking about now. But I adore every one of them. You take any one of them away from me, and I would be absolutely devastated. I just love them all so much. That's the best part. You know, you raise your kids. I remember when I was raising kids, oh, that's going to be a long time with a lot of kids around here. And you know, it went quite fast. And now, when, with the grandkids, they grew up fast too, but I enjoyed the heck out of them. And then I get great grandkids. I, right now, I've got 19 grandchildren and 20 great grandchildren, with two more coming this year. It's it's a it's the joy of life. One thing about being a great grandma, when Cheryl comes to visit her family, the, her only grandchildren at this point. She stays there because that's where the grandkids are. I know they're the magnet. They get her out here. And she comes quite often to be with them. But <clears throat> she loves them like she loves her own kids. And they're, every one of them, special to her in each way. And that's what makes her who she is, really. She, she, had, a, she had a lot of fun in life. She, she had a lot of friends. She had boyfriends. Yeah, she did. A couple of them. I have a very nice looking boys. Which one would she choose? She let him go on missions and <laughs> chose Glade Carpenter. And he's a good guy. He, he's, he's a good man. But Marty, in a lot of ways, had to be almost her support when he wasn't. When Glade was traveling a lot, she had Marty. And I think in a way, maybe he learned to be a good husband because he had to almost take a man's position during those years. They're both great guys. <laughs> what do you love about Connie? Connie is a great support to me now that uh, my children are all away and my grandchildren are running away being married and moving elsewhere and not always close by. But Connie checks with me all the time and she'll call me on a Saturday afternoon, which it almost is, and say, let's go over, let's go shopping. It's not fun to go shopping alone and she has the same problem because her daughter's not home, but we get to be buddies. But, but she was a cute little girl. She was, she's always been very friendly, very outgoing. I remember when we moved to Kaysville and a, a new person t came to church couple that lived, an older couple that moved into our neighborhood and, and she went and said, said, told, introduced herself to them and told her, you look new, you're new here, come sit with us. You know, and that was a favorite story of this sister as long as we lived there in the same ward with them. She was, she's just outgoing she's, she, and she still is in her job. She knows all kinds of people and their stories. She talks to them, gets into their lives. She's like that. She's a very special person. What is it you love about Dave? Dave is my baby. <laughs> he, was, he was such a joy to our family when he came. 
And for three months, he was just a, a baby and just lovely. And then he got sick and he was sick. If he was well this week, don't plan anything for next week because surely he will be sick again. It's just the way his life went for a year and a half. Finally, I got the doctor to take his tonsils out. He wasn't, he, the day he took them out, he didn't know whether to do it. He'd had him on an antibiotic so long that he had little black spots in his mouth. And the doctor just didn't know whether to do it. He had a degree of temperature. And I said, doctor, when will he ever be better than this? He's been on an antibiotic till he's got growths in his mouth from too much, killing too many germs in, in his body. And he's been like this for a year and a half. He came back in a few minutes. Okay, I think you're right. Took him out. The next day he was eating my chocolate chip cookies with oatmeal in it. He didn't even know his throat was sore. It was sore so much of his life that he didn't even know it. But then he turned into this marvelous little boy, just a regular little kid. <laughs> I remember one day he woke up from his nap and he, of course he was probably used to getting his way. But he, he wanted to get a, go right now and get a horse. Go on and let's go buy us a horse. I want a horse. He's probably three, you know. <laughs> I mean, he just, he, but, he, but he's been a fun, good boy. He's lived a good life. He's got a good wife and a good, good children, just waiting for the grandkids to start coming along and the girls to get married. That's okay. We're just to that point. But he is a delight. He's always here. He'll ask us every week. Is there something I can do? Do you need some help? And he's been down here helping. Sometimes he's mowed the lawn when George couldn't. He's helped him with whatever projects he was on. He's just a very delightful, helpful young man. Good father, good husband. Yeah, that's exactly what you want of all your children. And you know what? I got it. <laughs> what was the best part about being a mom to your kids? Just having him and loving him. And, and, you know, they all go through phases and they all have their ups and downs. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a mark on a door in a house in Brigham City where Connie was giving Cheryl a bad time. She took off her shoe and she threw it at her. She missed Connie, but she hit the door and there's a hole in it. <laughs> I mean, they have their little moments, every one of them do, when... They're difficult, or they're going through difficulties, and you're trying to help them get through this relationship, whether it's friend, a lot of times it's just their friends. They're mad at their friends. Never gonna play with him again. And a half hour later, they're about playing, back playing together. It's just, it's just a lot of interesting, fun experiences raising a family.